Hello everyone, <laughs> welcome to my video, it's in day speaking. Today we are welcoming Danielle, she's going to tell us about her story, but first she's going to tell us about herself. So welcome Danielle, uh, I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. My name is Danielle Batiste. I'm a mother of one, Brandon Bond, who's 14 years old and a lot of work. Uh, I'm an Army veteran and currently I'm working at the VA hospital. And I'm also a type two diabetic and I'm trying to bring awareness to type two di diabetes, to all of di diabetes, trying to give uh, education, change the mindset and that we can continue living with diabetes. It is for someone who's unfamiliar, what would you tell to somebody who never heard of diabetes or doesn't know anything about it? Someone that, like myself, when I was first told about diabetes, I never, of course, never heard of it. I didn't do my research, and I'm the type of person that always do research into anything, and I didn't. Um, I didn't know that diabetes, there was the hyper, the hypoglycemia, what, you know, your sugar fluctuates up and down, and you can, you, you feel this weirdness about yourself. I didn't know about carbs things like that, that has an effect on your body when you intake too many carbs or you um, eat a lot of sugar. I didn't know uh, diabetes can um, affect your eyes. I didn't know diabetes can affect your uh, heart. Uh, it was, it's a lot of things about diabetes that I, I did not know that I wish I had um, researched when I was told. Um, diabetes was just something that I just never heard of. I just heard of cancer more than anything of diabetes. Um, diabetes is not a death sentence, but I wish I just took more time to see what diabetes was. Diabetes is just a, a disease that um, does not rob your life. It just makes you more aware of what you inputting into your body as far as all the sugar and the carbs and things like that. It's a lifestyle change. You have to eat healthy. You have to exercise. You just have to be a little bit more vigilant. Um, I call it now, I live a conscious and a routine life and a more, and I added one more word, a more consistent life. So, um, I'm on top of everything uh, as far as living this life now with um, diabetes. You just have to just count everything that goes into your mouth, <laughs> you know, your carbs, your sugar, your intake, things like that. So it does not rob you of being um, normal. You just have to um, take a little bit extra time and be vigilant. I know that you want to raise awareness about diabetes. What would you tell somebody who's been diagnosed today? I would tell somebody that, that's um, been diagnosed with diabetes today is to basically, uh, when you talk with your doctor, find out uh, as far as your carb, find out your carb intake. What's your to and your from? Um, sugar is in everything. We cannot, as a matter of fact, sugar and carbs are in everything. We can't not stop eating it but we can limit how much we can put into our bodies um change your eating pattern uh, my eating pattern was a lot of fried food uh, i did not watch what i was putting into my mouth um but now i read food labels and i'm standing in the aisles and i'm, I'm, I'm counting if it's that's over my i put it back um but the main thing is if you do eat over Make sure your fiber intake, you know, matches a little bit where it counteracts the fiber will counteract some of your carb intake and your sugar. So it would help. Um, stay, stay very active. You act diabetes um, for diabetics. I'm sorry for diabetics. 30 minutes of exercise will help. I used to do three days a week of walking. Now I just walk every day and I'm over 30 minutes of walking. That helps. That helps tremendously with um, for diabetics. So um, between 
our um, watching what we eat and walking, we can fight this disease and keep it at bay. And please stay on top of your three month A1C. That helps with knowing how much of uh, sugar is attached to your red blood cells. I recently just got my A1C done. My prior three month A1C was 6.2. I just got my A1C done last week, Tuesday. My A1C was 5.7. So all you have to do is just basically be vigilant with how much sugar intake you're doing and just basically just keep your exercise, stay active, and you can fight this disease. Is there anything that diabetes took out of your life? Diabetes took out of my life um, a lot of my energy. Sometimes my energy level uh, will, be, will, be, will be down. Um, when I first was diagnosed, sometimes it would take like 30 minutes to get my energy level back. Now it takes like three or four days now. Uh, when I was first diagnosed, I was 39 years old. Now I'm 46. And you, you do see a difference as you age. It ages with you. Um, it, like I said, it, it took my energy, but I still get out there and I do get my exercise in because I know I cannot let it get me. I have to continue to win. Um, but it took what, away. It what took away your energy. Took your energy. Like you said, it, it used to be a few minutes and now it's like three days to get it back. So what do you mean by that? By that, I can, I, I will feel the tiredness and I will lay down and like 30 minutes or so, I'm back up, I'm feeling good. Now, if I take a, a flight or I'm just at work, you can just feel like somebody put a vacuum cleaner to you and just suck the energy out. You're just tired. And I just cannot bounce back like I could before. And it lingers for like, for me, and this is my body. Um, it's like three days and I'm like, wow, this is a long time. And when I sp spoke with my um, primary care doctor about it, she was like, you, as you get older, of course you see changes. So, and I was like, this is one change that I have seen with um, my body. Um, you also have to be aware of uh, any little things, watch it, you know, you, we have to be aware of our feet. Um, my cat had happened to scratch me on my thumb and it was a very deep cut and uh, I paid attention to it. And that's how I know my diabetes is in control because I heal fast. It didn't take days or weeks for the, um, the cut to heal. It healed real fast. So I knew my diabetes is in control. Is there anything that you wanted to do and you weren't able to realize it because of diabetes? I was, um, basically for me a pretty laid back person anyway so it's um not that much but i do in the beginning i do like to travel a little bit but now i don't like to fly um anymore i don't it's just too tiring it takes a lot out of you well it takes a lot out of me um with the long delays and the waiting and things like that, um, it tires me out really fast. So um, a lot of places that I, I would love to go, that if it's longer than three hours or four hours to get there, I don't go anymore. You said um, it's uh, you want to change the mindset about diabetes. It's not a death sentence. Nowadays, most of the people would think like cancer is also a death sentence. What if you had to compare the two diseases? What would you say? I would say that's a hard one, but um, diabetes will be a little bit more that you can fight uh, to me, uh, which both is a, a, a fightable disease. Both can go into remission. Um, but diabetes, I think you can fight a little bit, um, a little bit more and you can stay on top of that a little bit, a little bit more because it's, it's your mindset on what you do and 
what you're going to eat. If you're going to continue to eat sugar and carbs and things that you know that's going to elevate your um, sugar levels or things that's going to lower your sugar levels and you're not going to do anything about it. And when you go in for appointments and things like that and your sugar levels are out of control and you have to be hospitalized and going to diabetic comas and things like that, that was you continue to not listen to your body. You decided to do what you did. And when you don't feel right or things like that, you, you start to say, oh, my diabetes is out of control and this and this and that. Because I've seen it. I work in a hospital and I've seen it. Everybody, you know, blame the disease. But what did you do to get the disease to that point? Because obviously you was eating wrong. You, you're drinking sugary sodas. You're not doing what the doctor tells you to do. You know, you, you want to have the stuff that tastes good. But right now, that's, that's not for you. You have to do your part. And it was people, like I said, some people complain about their weight. But you have to get you have to get that weight off of you. Then once you get that weight off of you, you start feeling good, and then that what makes you want to get out there and do do more, and you start feeling good, looking good, and then you want to continue to fight and keep it at a good your A one C at a good level, and then you come off medication, and everything is going good. So between the two, I think you have a better chance with fighting diabetes i don't want to say a lot of, too much about cancer because like like i said b- between diabetes and cancer you can't go into remission with both but i think with diabetes is what you do to your yourself to your body that you know that you can stop as far as with these sugary things and the carbs that you're putting into your body so um would you say that when you realize that you're in a pre-diabetes phase, it's the moment you have to take care and change your habits? Yes, I, I, I think so. Because when I was in the pre-diabetes, pre-diabetes stage, she told me, because I went in, I was like, my, my mouth is um, dry. I'm and constantly who here. Told you, who told you? My uh, primary care doctor. When I went in, I was like, my mouth is dry. Um, I'm constantly urinating. And she was like, you pre-diabetic, you need to do what you need to do. I normally, like I said, I normally um, do our research, but I didn't. And when I went back to her, she was like, don't come to my office. Go straight to the lab because you over the line. And I was at 8.9 when I went. So she was like, I told you, but you didn't listen. And I wish I had. Uh, is it the type one or type two diabetes? I'm type two. Type two. So mm-hmm. if you, ha- you, if in the case you are type two and you are diagnosed uh, pre-diabetic, it's the moment where you have to, have to change your habits. Yes. And my habits was, I was, I was eating everything that you could think of, um, drinking everything that you could think of, and I was a little overweight. And what did you do? Uh, you were 39 when you were pre-diagnosed. Uh, right. You were still in the Army? No, I was working at the VA hospital then. Okay. So what changed since the moment you were pre-diagnosed and nowadays? What's the thing you changed? Did you take care of the overweight, or what have you done in between? I um I was diagnosed in uh, June of 2014, and I still was kind of um, in denial. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to believe it. Um, then I was told I needed to prick my finger twice a day. I'm scared of needles, and I was like, ain't no way I'm doing that. Um, she put me in a um, nutritionist class, and I was like, I'm not no diabetic because I don't have none of these symptoms that she was talking about. Oh, I have none of the symptoms that she was talking about. Um, I just didn't believe it. So 2015, 
I had my first symptom. Um, I had um, hypoglycemia. My sugar went down. I started shaking and things like that. So, and I was like, oh, this thing is real. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a diabetic. So I put myself in my first kickboxing class. And at that time, I was like 250 pounds. And I started doing kickboxing, and I got 30 pounds off of me. And I, from that 8.9, I got my A1C down to 6.2. And then from there, I got my A1C continually going from there. I got down to 4.8. And she was like, that's not even a diabetic. So I was like, now you can take me off the pills. I was, I was just so happy because I, I needed to wait off period. And I was like, 4.8, I was happy. But as you know, you, you settle back. When you, when you think you, oh, good, and you get back into that old pattern, and you don't know you're getting back into that old pattern, that A1C creeps back up. So um, just before I went to Paris, my A1C got back up to nine. Um, but by that time, I was going through stress. I was going through a divorce. So uh, things became stressful. So she put me back on my medication. And I was like, this is only going to be for a while because I'm not going to stay on this medication. I'm not going to stay with an A1C of nine. So from there, um, I fought my way back. And now I'm at 5.7. But that was also, we continuously had to get the mind back to where it was to be like, okay, this stuff is not a joke because the feeling of hype, hypoglycemia does not feel good. But one thing I can say, the only symptoms that I've ever had with uh, low blood sugar has always been the shaking of my hands. So I've, I keep um, glucose tablets in different places just in case, you know, just so I can have right there for me. So, but that's the only symptom I've ever had out of um, a low blood sugar has always been shaking off my hands. So I'm thankful for that. <laughs> but um, just the, the feeling is just not a good feeling. So. So knowing everything you know right now about the disease and living with it, what would you tell somebody who's diagnosed nowadays, like let's say today, uh, it's not a death sentence, like you said, but mm -hmm. what would you add, like, could you live normally without any fear of uh, having any symptom or anything bad happening to you? I would say yes, you can live normally. Uh, I haven't had any symptom of um, low blood sugar in months, and um, I'm proud of myself. Um, I want to say you, you, yes, you can live normally um, without having any symptoms because you, you're constantly, like I said, we um, conscious and routine and consistent. Everything now is like we are. How much carbs are in there? How much sugar is in that? And I'm constantly looking at total added sugar. Oh no, I can't have that. I don't want that. My biggest thing used to be too also was I love candy. Now you can't pay me to eat any type of candy. I don't want no candy. And that was a mindset thing. I was no more candy. I'm done. Um, Cause now candy, if I eat it, it goes straight to my head and I don't want that feeling. So I'm done. The only thing I have to watch, cause like I said, sugar and carbs is in everything that we we eat, but it's up to you to figure out and get with your doctor how much carbs, because my doctor told me my carbs are 90 to 140. I mean, 45 to 55, I'm sorry. My carbs are 45 to 55, and my sugar is 90 to 140 when I prick my finger uh, twice a day. That's my, my range that I have to stay in between. So, and that is my goal, and that's what I'm going to do. That's my mindset. That's what I'm going to do, because that's the feeling that I want. I want that good feeling. I don't want that bad feeling. And I'm continuing to walk every day. Some days it's cold. I'm walking. So you can live with diabetes. You don't have to have diabetes beat you. You can beat it and continue to live. Also, you want to make sure you get some sleep. Get some good sleep. Don't 
wake up and you, you know, you're tired because when you're tired, you make bad decisions, you make bad mistakes, you eat um, fast food, you know, things like that. Um, make sure you get your protein, you need to get, get the protein in your body. And the biggest thing, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> the biggest thing um, I do, water. I drink lots and lots of water. So water is my friend. So water is the best thing ever. So lots of water. Take anything bad that you you happen to make a mistake. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to um learn, you know, different things, talking to people. Um and, and the good thing now is with my little um that be just made better that I have on uh Facebook. People are messaging me now and want to know what are you doing. What's and your Facebook like, page? Excuse me. What's your Facebook? Where to find you? I'm on uh, Facebook under Danielle Baptiste, and my uh, business page is uh, Diabetes Made Better LLC. And then I wrote my first book. It was called Let Go My Glucose when I first got diagnosed uh, with diabetes. And then I'm, I'm starting to write my second book um on my life now with it because there has been a lot of changes since then uh, i have another question you said stress is really bad uh, how did you manage the stress while you were having your divorce which is not easy to handle um it's not it's not it was i'm going to be honest with you it was it was hard in the beginning it was it was hard and i didn't handle it well um i was eating i don't know how i handled it um it was a lot of um prayers <laughs> a lot of prayers and a lot of finally coming to the decision to be like i'm not gonna let this man get to me i can't let this man get to me because um he's 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 messing with my messing with my body and um it just became too much. It came too much. So I had to, I had to find me. That's basically through it. I just, I just had to find me and I had to make the decision that, um, if, if I keep letting him get to me, um, he's going, it's going to kill me. And I, I had to realize I have a son that I want to be here for. And the, the way I was feeling was just not good. And I'll, um, what would you tell somebody who's going through the same thing, having diabetes and having to go through the same uh, stress? I would say have long talks with yourself, lots of long talks with yourself, and realize that you can't let that other person get you, um, especially when you have diabetes because that stress kills. And um, when you get tired of having that feeling, you start fighting back and getting yourself together and um and realize you gotta you gotta fight for you you gotta fight for you you can't think about them you gotta fight for you and then you get your you get it you'll get it back together and the one thing too that will help also exercise exercise that stress out and while you exercise and you, you're talking to yourself <laughs> and um uh, nothing like just talking to yourself and and you, you'll figure it out you figure that. So you mean even if you are really stressed, even if you are really tired, no matter what's the situation, you have to still walk or do any exercise every day. And that was and that was me personally. You know, <clears throat> some people might not have that strength to do that, but me personally, I still get up. I still got up and I went out there and I exercise, even if it was a little walk. I still got up in my neighborhood and I did a little 10, 20 minute walk because that felt good to me. And um, I just did not want to go back to that old Danielle. Where I was just sitting there and the weight coming on. I, I just didn't want that. Um, and to be honest, I love the way that my clothes felt, you know, on me. And I was like, my diabetes is in control. I haven't had any symptoms of this diabetes. And I just love when I would go to my doctor and she was like, I'm just so proud of you. You're doing it. I just love, I love that when she would praise me, just like now, excuse me, when I go in and she see this 
And she'd be like, ooh, and be ready to take me off my pills. I'm going to be so happy in that office. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> I love that smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just happy because it's just like I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it, you know, when the nurse told me 5.7. I was like, oh, I thought you was going to say something else. <laughs> but it felt, it felt good because I know what I'm doing is, is working, is working. And then I just hear a lot of people say different things. And I was like, no, if you get out there and exercise and stop eating that poison, it helps. And then, you know, when people tell you, Oh, you slimming down. Your face is getting thinner and, you know, you're doing it. You, you, you looking good. And they know I'm a diabetic. I was like, oh, you're doing it. And then to hear another diabetic tell me, well, Dawn, what you doing? My A1C was 8.1. I was like, look at the stuff that you're eating. That's why <laughs> you go to the canteen and getting french fries. I'm not getting french fries. <laughs> good french fries. <laughs> have to choose. <laughs> So, thank you feels- for your time and um, <laughs> I hope sharing your experience would help a lot and anybody who needs any help or any support or any chat about the diabetes could come to you if you don't mind telling us again where to find you on Facebook and spell it maybe would help uh, my Facebook page is Danielle Batiste uh, you can find me on Facebook at Danielle Batiste um, I don't do too much on uh, Instagram but I, I think I should <laughs> But I don't know. How, how do you write it. your name? How do you spell it for somebody who's um, name? Uh, Danielle is D A N I E L L E, and Batiste is B A T I S T E. So, but I'm I'm pretty much a lot on um, Facebook. You can find me a lot there, and then my um, business page is Diabetes Made Better LLC. Perfect. So, anybody who wants to talk about diabetes could contact you there. Sure, that'll be great. Awesome. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you, and I love that smile. If you could have another one. <laughs> Thank you. That was great talking to you, too. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching. It was 